Hey, Stola Hansen here. In this video, we're going to talk about digital well-being in Microsoft 365. I believe you can break it down into four modules of succeeding with digital well-being. Before we dive into it, though, I want to highlight what employee well-being is all about. It is defined as the overall mental, physical, emotional, and economic health of your employees, and it influences your happiness. And I believe that digital well-being also influences your happiness. See how happy you are when you're succeeding with digital well-being. And digital well-being is all about tackling all those activities you have working in your day-to-day -day work. The challenge, though, is if you're not mastering your digital tools and activities in Microsoft 365, all those meetings, messages, emails, your thoughts, your activities, your tasks, your notifications on your mobile and how you interact with your colleagues, it becomes a stress element. And if you feel that you're overwhelmed with all the work in your head, then it becomes something that in worst case can lead to mental burnout and affect how you interact with your colleagues. Sean Arker in the book Happiness Advantage, he postulated that happy people are more approachable, they are better problem solvers and more creative. Think about this in your own context. You are wrapping up your day, you are about to log off Teams, you are finishing up your task, you are preparing mentally to pick up in the kindergarten, go to the gym, go to the grocery store, and then suddenly a colleague reaches out to you and says, hey, I need five minutes of your time because I have some questions. I have a deadline I have, and I, I know that you're really good at this topic. Do you have five minutes for me? And then you have two choices. If you are in a mental state where you are, you're tired, you are like, it's, it's Thursday and, and it's not even Friday yet. And you, you, you just want to leave work and you answer that, no, I'm not available right now. Don't, sorry, I don't have five minutes. You, you do really do have that, but, but mentally you have shut down. Right. And, um, so you're saying that I don't have those five minutes. Try to reach out to me tomorrow. But yeah, I'm doing a full day workshop tomorrow. I just packed with meetings and then it's the weekend. And then Monday, I'm also packed with meetings. So good luck finding a time where I can help you. The second choice you have is that, yes, of course I can help you. Five minutes, of course I have that time. I was about to wrap up, but I always want to talk about stuff I'm good at and love to work with. So let me help you and keep you in the flow, keep you moving forward. And maybe when I have the same situation, I need to ask you something, then I, I know I can get your help because I helped you, right? So. Yeah, let's spend those five minutes. Maybe those sub five minutes becomes 10 minutes, but still you help your colleague. And it's only your mental state, how, how, how much stressed you are, that really defines that answer. Microsoft introduced Microsoft Viva about a year ago. And that is all about the employee experience. So what if Microsoft now is building into the platform a way to be more effective, work smarter with Microsoft 365 and be able to measure that not on an, just on an individual level, but what if you can measure that on a corporate level? And if your employees gets a tad, a tad, just a tad more happy, just a tad more approachable, that's great for an individual level. What if that happened on a corporate level, an org wide level? And that is what digital well being is all about. It's all about breaking down all those activities and, and distribute them in the four different categories that I have defined. The model I'm going to present you with is something you can get started with right away. But you will also see that some of it is you individually working smarter, but you are also dependent that your team is working smarter, especially when it comes to meetings 
and Teams collaboration. The first module is Capture. It's all about capturing your thoughts, your ideas, your dreams, the tips and tricks you pick up from colleagues, friends, and so on into Microsoft To Do. And then you're asking, hey, why aren't you using OneNote or Planner? Well, the focus here is you as an individual. It turns out that everything goes into To Do. So if you create an Outlook task in OneNote, it will show up in To Do. If you flag an email, it will go into Microsoft To Do. If you capture a task in Planner and it gets assigned to you, then you will see it in Microsoft To Do. So the point is that everything for you shows up in Microsoft To Do. And if you look into Teams, Teams will then show you the tasks that are already in Microsoft To Do. So that's why you should use Microsoft To Do in digital well-being when you are capturing everything that's uh, important for you. I won't go into all the different capture methods because there are a lot of them and so many scenarios. When do you capture to to do? When do you capture to OneNote? I have a full hour live stream dedicated to this subject where I dive really deep into this and show you everything you need to know to set this up. So look at this live stream. When you're succeeding with capture, you get a tad more happy. And capture is one of the most important parts of digital well-being because it's all about you capturing all your activities and thoughts. The next module is process and execute. So this is you taking capture to the next level, really. Process and execute is all about going into Microsoft to do and start sorting your tasks into lists. And you will also break down your tasks into actions so that in order to reach that goal, which is the task, you can do this small action, which maybe takes five to 10 minutes in order to drive you towards the target. When you are executing and completing those tasks, you can use focus time in Viva Insights, which sets you in the focusing state in Microsoft Teams. And this is showing you now that it's all kind of connected now in, in Microsoft 365. It's not just all about you having access to the technology, because if you use the technology like it's 1995 and just ported over your like email handling over to Teams, well, you will uh, not succeed completely with the platform. And use the thinking around the Pomodoro technique in order to make sure you are able to reach deep work. It turns out that it takes between 10 to 21 minutes to reach the flow state, the focusing state, the deep work state. This is a big subject. And I have a live stream for module two that you can look at in this link. Now we have been talking about capture, process and execute, which are highly individual skills. Now we are moving over to module three, which is Teams culture. Teams culture is all about you and your team and your organization figuring out the best way to collaborate in Teams at the same time. And this is the biggest challenge we have in Microsoft 365 because it's change management. And Viva platform is designed to help you change these habits and measure them on a org wide level. And to give you a hint, what Teams culture is all about, it is about not using chat in Teams for processes. Those should go into Teams channels. And then you need to think about how you collaborate before during and after meetings so that you don't have to have a meeting about the meeting you're going to have and then have a meeting about the meeting you had because you can actually start and end the discussion that are related to meetings in Teams channels. Sign up and look for my live stream which, where I go through this in detail like in deep dive 
over an hour live stream. So you will learn everything I am thinking about by going to this live stream. When you are succeeding with Teams culture, you and your team gets a tad more happy. And that can have unforeseen consequences when more than one people gets happy at the same time, it creates like a positive spiral. You start praising people, you start sharing and, and letting them know how good they are at their work. And you are more approachable, better problem solving and succeeding in teams culture on organizational level. We don't know what happens then. It is like a singularity when, when more people get happy at the same time and have the correct digital wellness uh, thinking. The fourth module is notifications. I believe mastering notifications is the difference between burnout and being a productive employee. That's how important this is. I believe it's the most important skill for everyone to learn in the 2020s. And I'm not just talking about Microsoft Teams, I'm talking about all notifications and especially on your phone. I believe the smartphone is now in its youth. The smartphone's childhood was in the 2010s. And think about this, the iPhone came out in 2007 and became mainstream in 2011, which means that we have had the smartphone in our pocket now for over a decade. Why do I think it's in its youth? Well, now we have apps in the workplace that are functioning as consumer apps. Teams is a great example of this because it has notifications, it has uh, a way for you to communicate and collaborate with everyone. It gives you ability to chat and collaborate on the go with your mobile. Digital well-being was originally coined by Google and their definition was that you are understanding the challenge it is to have a screen that you are accessing at all times and doing something about this that's digital well-being and even on the Android phone there's a digital well-being app. What you will find in the module four live stream that you can find in this link is that I will show you how to hack notifications on Teams, on your computer and on your phone and how you should master vacation because that's actually a big deal. How do you prepare for vacation? How do you turn off notifications and the short version? Don't sign out of the applications. Don't leave the applications. We need to be able to control the notifications and get them at the correct time. Because there are three questions you should ask yourself when you get a notification. Why did I get it? Was it useful for me? And how can I control it so that I get it at the correct time? These are the four modules I have defined for digital well-being. Succeed with capture, succeed with process and execute, succeed with team's culture, and succeed with notifications. All of these are important on their own, but the sum of them is when you are making sense of all your activities and succeeding with them as part of your digital well being workday. Check out my deep dive live stream sessions and thanks for watching.